Did you know the smallest form of life can travel enormous distances? How do they do that? How do microbes fly in the upper atmosphere? Hi, I'm Jim Green, Chief Scientist at NASA, and this is Gravity Assist. On this season of Gravity Assist, we're looking for life beyond Earth. I'm here with Dr. David J. Smith from the NASA Ames Research Center, and David is an astrobiologist. Welcome to Gravity Assist. Thank you so much, Jim. I'm happy to be here. Let's start out with what are we talking about? What do we mean when we're talking about microorganisms and why are they so important in the search for life? When we talk about microorganisms or microbes, we're really talking about small life. Life's so small that you can't see it with your own eyeball. You know, when uh, our Earth had microbes for four billion years or so, and, and survived many mass extinctions that went on, you know, perhaps that's what happened on other planets. And this is why we're looking for microbial life on those planets. I remember when the discovery of microbes were found at high altitudes. What type of microbes have we found? We see the same kinds of microbes in the atmosphere that you would see if you went outside and scooped up some soil, a representative sample. The reason for that is maybe easier to understand if we just talk about how microbes move in air, right? So if you were to sneeze and I were to microbiologically sample what's coming out of your sneeze, more or less it would be representative of the microorganisms in your mouth. Now, in the atmosphere, you could think of geological and meteorological processes in effect causing the Earth's surface to sneeze. And therefore, the same signal we get in the atmosphere is representative of what was on the surface. We see fragments of uh, pollen and other pieces of biological debris in the atmosphere as well, too. And, uh, you know, speaking of sneezing, anybody that suffers from seasonal allergies is acutely aware of pollen uh, in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, you may not know that if you suffer from seasonal allergies, you too are an aerobiologist. Uh, but that's just to say that, you know, we, we have um, been impacted in a lot of ways by the movement of airborne microbes. You've done a lot of experiments, not only from aircraft, but from balloons too. Can you give us a little overview about what you've been doing with those platforms? Yeah, so we use large NASA scientific balloons to get to even higher altitudes uh, in the middle stratosphere, around 120,000 feet, where we can linger for days, if not weeks, depending on where and when we launch which is just so exciting because of the kinds of science that we can do. And in most cases, we'll take the same types of resilient microorganisms that we've collected using NASA aircraft to those middle regions of the stratosphere on large NASA balloons to expose them to the environment and all those stressful conditions in a way that after the experiment's over and we return those samples to the lab, we can measure who survived and how. 